Welcome to the fourth part of creating a inventory system in Unity and this time we'll be adding some chests. You will be able to set its size, set if you want to randomly spawn some items and obviously move the items from your inventory to the chest and the other way around. And this system is not only limited to the chests, it can obviously be any kind of storage you would want. We'll begin with making the UI, so we can just copy the inventory and add some slots if you want. I will make the actual storage chest, so we can just create a basic cube for reference. And I will create new script for the storage. And add it to the chest. In the storage script for now, we can just define a name of the storage, so if it is a chest or something, and then size of the storage. In the player script, where we have the raycast, I will also create a reference for the storage script and check if we are looking at some chest. So this is pretty much the same as with the item. If the storage is not equal to now, we will just check if we are pressing the key, but we also need to know if the storage is already opened. So for this, I will create a new variable in the inventory manager. It is a bool, I made it public and I added the attribute height in inspector because we probably don't need to see it. And in the inventory manager, I will also add two new voids, which will also be public and they will be for opening and closing the storage. I added a parameter for the storage that we are trying to open or close because later we will need to get some information from it. And I am also setting the is storage opened variable. Now we can continue with the player. So if you are pressing E and the inventory is opened, we will close and the other way around. So it should look like this. Nothing too complicated just yet. Back in Inventory Manager, I will create new game object variable, which will be for the storage parent, so that we can set it active or inactive. Set the storage parent to active, and then when we press tab and the inventory is opened, we can also close the storage. Else if, when we are pressing just the E key and the storage is opened, we'll close just the storage. Assign the storage parent and let's try it. Okay, so we come up to the chest. When I press E, it is opened. And when I press tab, I opened even the inventory. Tap again, I am closing it. What I notice that doesn't work is that I can't close it again, which is because we don't actually need the other check in the inventory manager, this else if, it should work even without it because we are already checking for that stuff in the player script. And down here in the inventory manager, when opening the storage, we probably also want to set the cursor lock state to none, and when closing it, we want to lock it again. Yep, now it is working better. I can open it, close it, open inventory, close both of them. Everything is working just fine. When opening the storage, we'll first set all of these slots to inactive and then we'll set only the number that we want to active based on the volume of the size of the storage. In the first for loop, we are going through all of the childs and setting them to false and in the second one, we are going only through the ones that we actually want to turn on. This is why we are using the storage at size. And then we are setting them to true. I have set size of the first chest to seven. You probably can't even see it, but when I open it, you can see that there's only seven slots and this other one should have 15. And yep, that's correct. So now we are able to set the amount of these slots the next thing that we'll need to do is also change the size of the background.
In this case, I will be changing just the size y because I don't think that we also need to change the x. So for example, if we have eight slots, so the storage that size is eight divided by four should be two and divided by four is 0.5, which is exactly half of the size because if it is on one, then it is the full 16 slots. And why I have the seal to int, this is if the storage size would be, for example, seven, then seven divided by four would give us 1.7. But what we want is still the two, because even when we have just seven slots, we want to have the scale of the background be just for the two rows of the slots. Then from the storage parent, I'm getting the child on index zero, which is the background and setting the scale based on the size y. You can see that it is correctly setting the scale, but we'll need to adjust also the position. To get the position y, I'm using this formula. So I have one, which is the maximum size. And from it, I want to subtract the current size. And then I'm multiplying it by some number, which I had to kind of guess, but it is basically two times size of one of these slots, which for me is 100 is one. So times two is 200. And then just adding the spaces between them. Then we are setting the local position of the background. So the X, we already know that. And the Y, I'm just adding the position Y to the current position Y. Then you can see that for four slots, it is working. Then we have eight, still working, 12, and then we have 16. Yeah, it looks fine. And now as we have everything prepared, we can get to the more interesting stuff, which is actually saving some items in the inventory. But for this, we will need to create a new class so that in the storage script, we can store a list of all of these stored items. So I will create a new script. Call it storage item. We can remove all of the voids. We can also remove mono behavior. We will make it serializable so that we can see it in inspector. Add two variables. One will be for the current stack size and second one for the item scriptable object. I will also create a constructor for this class so that when we will create an instance of it, we will be easily able to set these two properties. Next, we will go to storage script and create a list of these storage items. Right now, there is nothing in the list. So on start, I will just add some new objects so that it is full. I'm defining a integer for the number of the items that we need to fill the list based on the size. And then I'm just adding new storage item with the stack of zero and the scriptable object of null. But if we want to add our own items, we can obviously go back to the scene, select some of the chests and under the items, we can just hit the plus icon and set our own item that we want to be in the chest. But right now we won't be able to see any of the items in the chest. We'll first need to add some code in the inventory manager. So when we open the storage, I will destroy all of the items and then I will instantiate new ones based on the list that we have created in the storage class. So just a basic for loop to destroy all of the items. Then I'm going through each storage item in the list of the items in the storage class. If the item scriptable object of this item is not equal to null, then I'm instantiating new item just using the item prefab. I'm getting the inventory item component, setting the scriptable object and the stack current. I'm also getting a slot based on the index, then I'm setting a parent of the new item to the correct parent, which is the items parent. So we need to get this from the slot. Then I'm just setting the health item of the correct slot. And just to make sure that everything is correct, I'm setting the local scale and adding the index. 
And this should be all for opening the storage, so let's see if it works. In the first chest, we should have three machetes. So, yep, there is three of them. Let's take a look at the other one. It seems that this is giving us an error. And that's just because tiny mistake that I made, which is when we are destroying all of the items, we need to destroy obviously the game object, not the transform. So let's try it again. In the first one, yeah, we have the three machetes. Then we have nothing, which is correct because I said it this way. Then, yes, we have some other items. And again, it seems to be working. We can also move the items, put them to our inventory and so on. But right now we have done nothing with the saving of the items. So when I put them to the chest, close it, open it, you can see that it is resetting. In order to save the items to the list, we'll need to go through all of these slots in the storage, check if there is some health item. If there is, we'll just add it to the list. Get the slots burned. We have done this many times. Then I'm also clearing the list so that we can add the other items later. Then I'm going through all of these slots. I'm saving the slot into a variable. I'm checking if the slot is active and if there is some held item by the slot. If this is true, I am setting a inventory item, which we get from the slot. So we get the component inventory slot. From this, we get the health item game object. And from this, we get the inventory item. Then I'm adding new storage item to the items list. And I am getting all of the information from the inventory item. Else, if this is not true, I'm just adding a empty item. And one last thing that I forgot to do is that even when we press the tab and we are closing the storage, we still want to call the close storage void. So for this, I will need to save the storage into a variable. I will call it last storage. When opening the storage, I will just set it to the storage. And when closing, I will set the last storage to now. So when I am pressing the tab and the last storage is not equal to null, we can also close the storage. So now we will try coming to the first chest. We can open it. We have three machetes. I can take it to my inventory. And when we close it, there should be nothing. That's correct. I can put some stuff to the chest, close it, take a look again. And we can see that it is correctly saved. I can take it from the chest, put it to any of these other chests, and it should be saving all the time. Yep, that's correct. To make it a bit more fun, let's also add the random spawning items. I will create a new script, call it random spawning items. We'll make it a scriptable object so that we can create multiple instances of it and have different sets of the random spawning items. We'll define three variables here. One will be a list containing all of the item scriptable objects that we can spawn. Then two integers, one will be for the minimum count that can be spawned. And second one will be for the maximum count. That's all that we need. And now we can define our own rarities. So set the items that you want to spawn, the minimum and the maximum count. We will be making the random spawning in the storage script on the start. I will define three variables. One will be if we want to have random spawning items in the chest. Second one will be just for the rarity, for the item scriptable object that we have just made. And the third one will just tell us if we have already spawned the items, so we are not spawning them again. On start, we can check if we want to spawn the items and we haven't spawned them yet. Then we will define a count, how many items we want to spawn. We will take this from the scriptable object. If we want to spawn the items and they haven't spawned yet, then I'm defining an integer for the count, which is just based on the 
two variables that we set in the scriptable object. Here I'm adding one because as you can see, the last value is exclusive. In the for loop, I am going through as many objects as we want to spawn. Then I am defining the item scriptable object that we want to spawn. So I am accessing the scriptable object items to spawn. From this, I am accessing the list. And then I am just using random that range to get the index. The index can be anything from zero to the maximum count. Then I am just setting the item scriptable object in the items list in the storage to the item to spawn, which we have defined here. And then if the maximum stack size of this item can be greater than one, then I'm defining stack size that we will set to the item, just another random that range. The maximum value is the stack max. I am setting the stack size. Else, if the stack max can be only one, I'm setting it to one. And this is all that we need. Now you can select some of the chests. If you want to spawn the items, you can just tick this boolean and select the scriptable object of the rarity that you want to spawn. So the first chest should be empty, that's correct. Let's take a look at the second one. Yep, some random items have spawned in. The third one should also be empty, yes, and the fourth should also have some items. But you can see that there is nothing because I forgot to tick this boolean. But you can see that with this chest, this is the only chest where some items should actually spawn. It is working correctly and I can take them to my inventory. So now you are able to create your own inventory and storage system, which I think is pretty useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!